Making headlines this morning, a family without a home after their house burned down in Southeast Bear County. Local leaders concerned that rising temperatures could lead to rising crowds and in turn a rise in coronavirus cases. I'm Alex Prechet in Washington with details on the now 49 states relaxing restrictions. And taking a look outside with live cam this morning. Pretty pleasant outside for now. It's going to be a warm week though. We're going to check in with Mike in just a bit. And good Monday morning. It is May 18th. Thanks for joining us. Hope you had a good weekend. Not bad weather wise after we got those storms through here and Mike is joining us with a sneak peek at the rest of the work week. Good morning. How was your weekend? Nice. I mean, it was just beautiful after all that uh, that rain and those heavy storms on Friday night, early Saturday morning. And then, yeah, it cleared out and humidity was tolerable. That's the way it is this morning. So but like you said, Stephanie, it's going to be hot the next couple of days. We're looking at uh, some mid to upper 90s the next few days, but the beautiful clear skies. I mean, it's just going to be a prize winner looking of day and that's the case looking out to the east as of right now should be a spectacular sunrise. Temperatures are a little bit above normal, but we will drop down a couple of more notches at least because we've got to those clear skies out there and the humidity is is not bad this morning. I mean, it's kind of on the verge of being up there, but it is definitely tolerable mold from all the uh, moisture from those uh, showers did shoot up to 1520 low amounts of everything else. And there is an ozone action day in effect for the metropolitan area today. As far as temperatures, 84 at noon, 93 for a high temperature. Lots of sunshine, great looking, and it's going to be one of the situations where we have a little bit more humidity in the morning and it is going to be dropping down in the afternoon, so it is going to be a comfortable 93 degrees, but get ready because it's going to get even hotter tomorrow. More rain chances down the road. Details coming up. Speaking of the roads, time saver traffic, here is Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, sir. How was your weekend? Well, good morning, Mike. Pretty good. Not too bad as we take a look at the roadways. <clears throat> Excuse me. This morning, so far, things are still clear out there. We're hoping that they stay that way. Let's take a look at Transguide. Right now, no accidents on the highways. We're moving over to, there we go. If I can stop changing Mike's maps and just change mine, we'd be doing good. 35 is 604, no problems there. And we're looking at uh, 410 at Highway 151. Travel in both directions on 410, still running smoothly with no delays. And then 281, winding way, north and southbound lanes. So far, no problems out there. Mark, Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Marcus. And a home in the southeast part of the county is a total loss this morning after a fire broke out. Crews were called out to Palm Park Boulevard in Aleda last night. That's just off of Highway 181. Now that around 8 p.m. they found a mobile home fully engulfed. Fire crews say no one was hurt. Another nearby home was also involved in that fire, but was not deemed a total loss. The mobile home was also right next to a fireworks stand, but we're told it was not affected by the flames. The cause is still under investigation. As Governor Abbott gets ready to potentially announce another phase to reopen the state later today here at home, Bear County's positive COVID-19 cases are starting to drop. Right now, it's half of what it was in April. But will those numbers continue to go down or could they rise again? Our Sarah Costa joins us live from home to explain. Sarah? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. As we see those numbers of of tests become more available. Mayor Ron Nierberg says we can see the number of positive coronavirus cases go up, but he says that doesn't necessarily mean that we are seeing another peak. That's what he said last night in a press conference. Currently, there are 2,120 confirmed coronavirus cases in Bear County. Now, 987 of those cases are active and 1,071 people have recovered and 70 are hospitalized. 31 of those patients in the hospital are in ICU. One of, the big, one of the big pushes from last night's press conference was a need to donate blood and plasma for COVID-19 patients. Currently, the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center's blood bank is down to just over a two-day supply. This after the city and the, the county opened up for elective for elective surgeries. And now as for those that are wishing to donate, they are having a blood drive at the Alamo Dome May 21st through May 23rd. And you can find all that information right now on KSAT.com. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. 
Thank you, Sarah. Meanwhile, city leaders say they are working to make sure marginalized populations know they have not been forgotten amid the coronavirus pandemic. Among those populations, the city's homeless. District 1 Councilman Roberto Trevino says there has been a 7% increase in the homeless population since the last count, and he believes there could be more. He says as Haven for Hope follows social dis distancing rules, it's also restricted the amount of people they can accept off the streets. It's very difficult to know what's going on uh, with them and their health. People simply hide and go into the shadows rather than go and accept services that we can provide them. The city has not reported any COVID-19 cases among the homeless population, but city leaders say that doesn't mean they aren't out there. Also, Trevino says anytime a new encampment pops up, the city's solid waste management has to make sure those areas are cleaned up. This morning, 49 states now relaxing restrictions for the coronavirus. This says the U.S. reaches new milestone, 1.5 million COVID-19 cases. Death toll now stands at more than 89,000. ABC's Alex Brache has more from Washington. Across the country, warm weather making social distancing more difficult. This was a scene in New York City over the weekend. Crowds outside of bars, their to-go drinks in hand. I'm not comfortable at all with people congregating outside bars. And if we have to shut places down, we will. The crowds worrisome for city leaders, but bars and restaurants have been hit hard by the pandemic. Restaurant owners now telling researchers if the crisis lasts six months, they'll have about a 15% chance of survival. As of today, nearly every state is easing restrictions, though several are seeing a rise in cases, according to a New York Times analysis. That includes Texas, which is looking to lift additional restrictions. The Lone Star State had more than 700 new cases reported near Amarillo on Saturday, many stemming from meatpacking plants. Texas has tested just under 700,000 people. It has a population of 29 million. Quarantine fatigue is setting in. In Florida, chaos after a large group gathered for a block party near Orlando. Hands up! Hands up! Seven people were arrested after deputies say they were hit with glass bottles. This as the state eases restrictions on gyms and New Jersey allowing curbside pickup at retail stores. But federal chairman Jerome Powell warning of a long road to recovery. This economy will recover. It may take a while. It may take a, a period of time. It could stretch through the end of next year. We really don't know. And speaking of the recovery, President Trump, who's been pushing to get the country back up and running, even making an unannounced call into a live PGA event, saying that he was happy that pro golfers were back out on the greens. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Monday morning, 437, you're watching GMSA. And still ahead on GMSA, even in the middle of the pandemic, business is booming on the popular website Etsy. Uh, look at how small businesses are using this platform to survive. And next more on a deadly plane crash involving the Royal Canadian Air Force's Snowbirds aircraft team. And taking a look outside with live cam, uh, it's nice and dry right now. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the rain. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a warm week, but we're checking with Mike for all the details in just a bit. Good morning headlines. The Royal Canadian Air Force says a member of its Snowbirds demonstration team died in a crash over the weekend. Snowbirds perform shows similar to the Blue Angels. You, in the U.S., uh, the National Defense Canadian Armed Forces has identified the victim as Captain Jennifer Casey, a pilot of the aircraft. Captain Richard McDougall is reportedly being treated for injuries. Officials say the jet went down in British Columbia about 150 miles northeast of Vancouver. The team involved in the crash was on a cross-country tour to honor health care workers battling COVID-19. The border near India and Bangladesh bracing for cyclone Umpun. Now the storm continues to form with winds now at 150 miles per hour. It's equivalent to a category four hurricane. Now the severe storm is expected to impact tens of millions of people with damaging winds and flooding rainfall. This also comes as India is battling a high number of coronavirus cases. Today marks the 40th anniversary of the eruption of Mount St. Helens. The blast on May 18, 1980 killed 57 people and did more than a billion dollars worth of damage. There have been at least four major, four significant eruptions over the past five centuries. The volcano in the Cascade Mountains in Washington State, nearly 100 miles south of Seattle. Mount St. Helens officially recognized as a volcano in 1835.
442, 70 degrees. Still ahead, a first look at how small businesses are getting by thanks to the online business Etsy. And next, as we approach what could be a busy Memorial Day weekend, how some states are being proactive as Americans get ready to start their vacations amid the pandemic. Welcome back. It is 445. The online marketplace Etsy has quickly become the new American bread basket. This as many people turn to the website to buy everything from masks to baked goods. ABC's Rebecca Jarvis has the details in this morning's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, call it the Etsy economy. I didn't think people would be spending money and shopping this way during the pandemic, but I just didn't think about the fact that food is comfort. So right now people want biscuits. Suzanne McMinn is one of the many sellers on Etsy whose business is booming. The website has become a lifeline for small business. And this morning we're going one on one with Etsy CEO Josh Silverman. Josh, what have you seen on Etsy since the pandemic began? You know, there's really been an explosion of demand on Etsy. It's such a great opportunity for small bakeries who've been so hard hit by the crisis to move on to Etsy and then find buyers. So how can you take a side hobby and turn it into an Etsy side hustle? We'll have much more of our interview coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Well, many states are gearing up for Memorial Day weekend with coronavirus restrictions in place. Some hard hit areas used this past weekend as a test drive to see how cautious people might be at the beaches and parks during the upcoming holiday. Karen Kafa has more from Washington. With temperatures in the 80s in Washington, D.C., Georgetown waterfront crowds previewed how social distancing might meet summer. The weekend also brought people out to the National Mall as D.C. remains under a stay-at-home order until June 8th. In New Jersey, some beaches like Ocean City opened in a dry run for Memorial Day weekend. We want to be able to assess the impact of our steps, uh, be able to get our enforcement right, tweak it where we have to. Boardwalk business owners watching crowds, too. We need to get our act together by next weekend. That's when the big rush to the Jersey Shore will take place. On the other side of the country, Los Angeles County, California, also with open beaches this weekend with rules like face coverings. Hopefully people are uh, being responsible and, you know, won't ruin it for everybody else. Even in New York State, upstate regions are opening up. It is still reliant on what we do. It is reliant on human behavior. But some states are seeing their daily number of new coronavirus cases rise, like Texas, South Dakota, and Arkansas. In June will tell us a lot about the decisions that we made in May. For the first time in 20 years, AAA did not issue a Memorial Day travel forecast ahead of next weekend, expecting coronavirus restrictions to push volume to a record low. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. It is exactly 448, 70 degrees. Let's check the roads with Marcus Trujillo. Well, they're there. <laughs> they haven't gone anywhere. Uh, not too bad of a way as traffic goes, so, so we're off to a pretty good start as far as the highways are concerned. Let's go start over here on trans guide right now you can see that uh no problems there 35 at fm 482 and as we move to some other areas like 35 at schwab road traffic still running smoothly all the way through fm 1103 and even uh, down as far as fm 3009 uh, even the tractor trailer traffic seems to have uh, subsided somewhat 35 and 37 here the interchange here in the downtown vicinity so far no problems there and take a look that's 410 equilibrium and some people keep an eye on some vehicles there new vehicles I-10 and medical, no problems. All in all, not a bad time out there on the roadway. So just make sure you buckle up. Take your patience with you once you head out. We have blinked, and it's already almost Memorial Day weekend. Wow. An official start of summer. Yeah, and it's going to be, right now, it's looking like there may be a couple of showers around. So just uh, not... Not a washout. I think the heaviest rain chance is going to be probably Thursday and Friday, but at least temperatures will be down somewhat once we get in toward the weekend. Okay, but yeah. in the meantime, in the meantime, it's going to be heating up. Yesterday we were in the low 90s. Today we're going to be low to mid 90s around the area. And look at it was such a beautiful day. I mean, beautiful weekend after we had those storms. And I know some folks got hit really hard Friday night, early Saturday morning, but uh, it really kind of scoured the atmosphere and settled things down. And that's why it was such a pleasant day then Saturday as well as yesterday and a great looking uh, sunset. And take a look right now and look at that, that little sliver 
of a moon right there. Very calm. I'm going to check out. I don't know what that planet is. I'll guess Jupiter. I don't know for sure. I'm going to look that up, but uh, beautiful sky out there. And it's, it's fairly pleasant when you step outside as well. We're at 70 right now. We are uh, just a couple of degrees above normal. 63 Balverde, 65 Bandera. And the humidity, which, okay, so we're at 63 for a dew point temperature. It's above 60. That's the threshold when you start to feel it. But again, that's not too bad. And the nice thing is we are going to be seeing we don't have obviously any uh, clouds showing up at all. We are going to be seeing humidity levels drop down in the afternoon. So we'll go through that kind of 24 hour cycle where we'll have more humidity and dew points up in the mid 60s in the morning hours and then down into the low 60s. So it'll be a fairly comfortable low 90s, even though we are going to be on the hot side. Humidity comes back up again tomorrow morning, drops down in the afternoon. But the, the one thing, though, with dry air, it heats up a lot more easily, uh, more efficiently than moist air does. And so that's why temperatures are getting well up into the 90s. And tomorrow's going to be a scorcher of a day. It, humidity is going to be OK, but we're going to be well up into the upper mid to upper 90s. And even some triple digits are possible along the Rio Grande Valley. And that's going to be tomorrow. And then Wednesday, it's still going to be on the hot side, but we will start to see a uh, little bit more humidity coming in here, maybe a couple of extra clouds. So nothing around here today, really, nor uh, tomorrow as far as any clouds, maybe a couple along the coastal plains starting off tomorrow morning. Then Wednesday, moisture comes back in here. We'll still have plenty of sunshine on Wednesday, but we are going to be seeing, uh, like I said, a couple of more clouds, and then that's going to lead to that chance for some rain. Now, uh, upstream, there's really not anything big headed in our direction maybe by the end of the week and toward the weekend. And then you may have heard off to the East Coast, there's the first named storm of the tropical season. It's a little ahead of schedule. Tropical season doesn't start until June 1st, but this is Tropical Storm Arthur, and it's going to be just scooching off into the mid-Atlantic, so it's still going to be a big rain producer out there in the Outer Banks. As far as our weather today, 84 degrees at noon, sunny skies, and it's going to be a hot one today. Normal highs upper 80, so we'll be a good 5 degrees or more above normal into the low and mid-90s around here, although humidity is going to be okay. And then tomorrow, it gets even hotter. We're going to make it up to 98 degrees tomorrow. 95 on Wednesday, a couple of extra clouds. Showers, a few thunderstorms. Going to have to kind of keep an eye on things. I think Thursday, Friday, as far as some of those uh, thunderstorms. And then these temperatures will be dropping down to at or slightly below normal readings by the weekend. Okay, follow up with us on uh, what's up near the moon there. My guess is Jupiter. I know. I think that's a good guess, but I don't know. I keep yeah. adding the app that we can check, and then I delete it because it. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a, yeah, add, I'm delete, go, add, delete. It it's, right like, it's like a grocery cart. Thank you, Mike. Right now we're at 452, 70 degrees. <laughs> grocery. <laughs> Adding and deleting. Yeah, now. yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. Coming up next, as movie theaters continue to stay closed, an update on several debuts of potential blockbusters like Wonder Woman 1984. Here are your lottery numbers 610 Fireball 0 for pick three. Daily four numbers 8930 Fireball 0. Cash 5 37 24 26 31. Lotto Texas 2 17 31 33 34 37. And your Powerball number is 8, 12, 26, 39, 42, Powerball 11, Power Play 2. Good luck. An update on some upcoming blockbusters. Expecting to hit the theater soon and a big birthday for the king of country music. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. I'm great. This is not what you think. Wonder Woman 1984 is still scheduled to open August 14th, but with the COVID-19 pandemic keeping theaters closed and the Memorial Day start of the summer movie season just one week away, it's anyone's guess what potential blockbusters, if any, will see theatrical debuts. My father cannot fight, so I will take his place. Disney's Mulan is still scheduled to open July 24th. Christopher Nolan's Tenant and the new SpongeBob SquarePants and Bill and Ted movies also scheduled for summer debuts for now. So I fired the boys. <laughs> the accolades continue for comic actor Fred Willard, who died Friday. A who's who of American comedy, including Henry Winkler, Jimmy Kimmel, Ben Stiller, Ellen DeGeneres, Rob Reiner, and many others, all celebrating both Willard's genius and his kindness. 30 Rock and Saturday Night Live star Tina Fey is 50 Monday. Do you love me? And country music legend George Strait is 68. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. 
68 years I, old. I can't believe that. Well, you know, in my head, he'll forever be that age. Well, of course. We just saw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Have you met him? <laughs> no, no, not in I, person. I, I haven't met him. I used to live out the end of town he lives in, and I don't live, I've only seen him once at the grocery store, and he pulled up in a Rolls Royce. Oh, well, of course. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, hi. Hi, King of Country. <laughs> nice Rolls. Yeah. 457, 70 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour, a flyover intended to boost morale during the pandemic turns tragic. We'll have the latest on a Canadian acrobatic jet that crashed into a neighborhood in British Columbia this weekend. Plus, bet you saw this all over Facebook this weekend. I noticed it yesterday. More on the social media giant's launch of their new avatar feature. That's coming up in Tech Bytes. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this hour, Governor Greg Abbott set to give an update on a reopening Texas at a press conference later today. Plus the latest on a Canadian jet that crashed during a flyover intended to boost morale during the pandemic. And back here at home, not a bad weekend across South Texas. Mike says things are going to really start heating up now that we are past the midway point the month of May. And good morning to you. It is Monday. It is May 18th. Thanks for joining us. Happy Monday. Hope you had a good weekend. One week away from Memorial Day already. That's right. It, it really did get here quickly. Kind of snuck up yeah. on us, although we've kind of been asleep for the last month or a couple months, haven't <laughs> we, Mike? Well, that's like a lot of people saying it's like April. What was April? Was April a month this year? <laughs> Not so. this year. You know, and, and unfortunately, Memorial Day weekend is going to have a little bit different feel to it, mm -hmm. but uh, we still have to remember why we celebrate Memorial Day, of course. Temperatures right now, well, we have dropped down to 68 degrees. That's the normal low here in town. Uh, 64 out there in Rock Springs, 69 down along the uh, the coastal plain and 67 in Gonzales. And uh, the humidity, dew point temperatures are not bad. We don't have much of a breeze out there and there are a lot of clear skies, so it's a really kind of a pleasant morning. It is going to be hot today. Now look at some of these temperatures and a lot of them are close to their respected normals in the uh, low mid 60s. Of course, we're at uh, 68 degrees. As I said the normal low temperature molds on the high side and pigweed and grass are both on the low side. There's also an ozone action day in effect today for the, uh, the metropolitan area, Bear County and all of the uh, surrounding counties. Uh, we are going to be going from a clear, pleasant morning to very sunny, hot, OK humidity, though. We're going to be in one of those situations where we have a little bit more humidity in the morning and then it drops down in the afternoon. That's going to be the situation tomorrow as well. We're going to be up around low to mid 90s today and then it's going to be hotter tomorrow. We're going to be in the upper 90s and probably even chalking up a couple of triple digits along the, the Rio Grande Valley. Then toward the end of the week and the weekend, there will be a couple of uh, scattered showers, a few thunderstorms around here. Uh, probably a better chance of rain right now. It looks like Thursday and Friday and then just a couple of scattered showers as we go in toward the weekend. But at least temperatures will be dropping back down to about normal readings, maybe even a little bit below that once we get in toward the weekend. Details coming up. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything going on on this Monday, sir? Well, so far, Mike, things look pretty good. So we're off to a great start for this week as far as your travel is concerned out there on the highways. That's 10 at West Avenue. No problems all the way through I-10 at La Cantera. So as we scroll through a couple of other areas, all the way out there, I-10 at Ralph Row Road, you see uh, not too many folks out there this early in the morning, but it is early. And then 10 at Bernie Sage Road, a little bit of construction, so watch out for those flashing lights. Stephanie? Thank you, Marcus. And Governor Greg Abbott is expected to further address the reopening of the state during a briefing later this afternoon. We're going to bring you that broadcast live at 2 p.m. here on KSET 12 and at KSET.com. You can also find the most important updates from the briefing during our newscast at 5, 6, 9 and on the night beat. Meanwhile, gyms will reopen in San Antonio today after being closed for weeks due to coronavirus. But what will be the updated safety protocols really look like? Our Sarah Costa joins us live from home to explain. Sarah? Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, there's going to be several city and state restrictions that those gyms must follow. And one of the biggest changes you'll see are there going to there's going to be less people at the gym. That's due to the 25 percent capacity rule. Now, don't plan on showering at the gym because locker rooms and showers showers will also be off limits due to state restrictions. All Gold's gym locations in San Antonio have installed step in pools and a foot operated door opener 
to avoid anyone from touching door handles. There are 25 Gold Gym locations throughout the San Antonio area. The senior vice president of Gold Gym says gloves and masks are not required for members, but highly recommended. Now for a checklist of guidelines that all of those gyms in the state and locally must follow, you can head to ksat.com and you can find all that information. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. Bear County Commissioners are announcing a new partnership between the city and the county to provide essential item bags for small businesses. The new program allows business owners to pick up a free one week supply of safety items that includes personal protective equipment, touchless thermometers, gloves, face masks and plexiglass barriers. This is strictly for businesses with less than 25 employees. Registration for the bags can be completed on either the city or the county websites. We have a link to those sites at KSAT.com. In your morning headlines, a Canadian acrobatic jet crashed into a British Columbia neighborhood during a snowbird's flyover intended to boost morale during the pandemic. As ABC's Megan Tavrizian reports, the Snowbirds are Canada's equivalent of the U.S. Air Force Thunderbirds or Navy's Blue Angels. This morning, video showing two Snowbird jets, part of the Canadian Armed Forces, taking off Sunday moments before a fatal crash. One jet veering to the left, appearing to do a barrel roll in the air before starting to plunge straight to the ground. We just crashed. Oh my God. The flight, part of a national campaign to boost morale across Canada during the COVID-19 crisis. The Snowbirds, similar to America's version of the Blue Angels, were in the middle of crossing the country doing flyovers in British Columbia. Columbia. One of the snowbirds flying a little lower than typically expected did a barrel roll approximately over crest line. There was a flash or a spark shortly after the barrel roll and I saw a pilot eject and the plane basically just took a nosedive straight into the ground. The two pilots crashing into this neighborhood, causing at least one house to catch fire. Emergency responders performing rescue operations on the roof of a nearby house. There was a large amount of debris uh, in around a three home uh, proximity. Uh, the one home was uh, significantly damaged by fire. Captain Jennifer Casey died in the crash. The former journalist joined the Snowbirds in November of 2018. The Royal Canadian Air Force tweeting, we are deeply saddened and grieve alongside Jen's family and friends. In October of last year, a Snowbird jet crashed during an air show in Atlanta, Georgia. In that crash, the pilot was able to eject safely and wasn't injured. No one on the ground was hurt. Megan Terizian, ABC News, New York. San Antonio police and Crime Stoppers are looking for a suspect that they say attacked a local convenience store worker. Now it happened on the city's south side back on April 21st at the Lucky 7 Food Mart on South Flores Street. Police say that suspect started yelling at the clerk when the clerk asked the man to leave. Police say he pulled out a knife and lunged at the clerk, hitting him on the head. The suspect then ran away. If you have any information, you can call Crime Stoppers at number 210-224-STOP. You could receive a cash reward for the information that you provide. 508, 68 degrees. And still ahead, you may have seen these all over the place on social media. Facebook is rolling out its avatar feature to users in the U.S. this week. Today in our great grad series, we introduce you to a Bernie High School softball standout who's on her way to Notre Dame. That's coming up on GMSA. And a work week forecast coming up with Mike Osterhey. Stick around. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio on an early, early Monday morning. Five eleven. For many, it's been a senior year with so many uncertainties, but one Bernie High School senior is trying to rise above it all and just focus on her bright future ahead. This morning in our great graduate series, our Erica Hernandez introduces us to softball superstar Mackenzie Vasquez. The softball fields have been empty this season, COVID-19 restricting any kind of UIL play this spring. I think... What was most upsetting for me was the cancellation of our softball season. Actually, we had a really good team this year. McKenzie has had a very successful high school career in softball, a starter all four years and first team all state in Texas, which means her softball career is not over. I had a few other offers. And so um, when I actually got the call from Notre Dame, I was 
sitting in chemistry class and um, my dad called me, told me the news, and I was so excited. I knew right then and there I was going to Notre Dame, I was going to commit there. McKenzie will be heading to South Bend, Indiana this August to attend the University of Notre Dame, but until then she is trying to enjoy her final days as a senior in high school. I think it's tough just understanding that we're not going to get some of the um, regular privileges that most seniors got. And, but luckily our community has been so great in going the extra mile to recognize us. And she offers a bit of advice for other students about to become seniors. Just don't take anything for granted. Just live it up while you can and um, take advantage of, this, of these moments. Not only did McKenzie succeed on the softball field, but also in the classroom, finishing in the top 10% of her senior class at Bernie High School. We wish her the best of luck at Notre Dame University. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Playing softball for the yes, Fighting Irish. Impressive. Congratulations, McKenzie. No doubt about that. 513, 68 degrees on your Monday morning. And still ahead, more on a special virtual concert that aims to provide crisis care and ongoing support to homeless and trafficked youth. And up next one, Apple's newest move to open 25 U.S. stores this week. These are extraordinary times, and we want to thank the extraordinary people in the healthcare community working to care for all of us. At Novartis, we promise to do our part. As always, we're doing everything we can to help keep Cosentix accessible and affordable. If you have any questions at all, call us, email us, visit us online. We are here to help support you when you need us. Take care and be well. To learn more, call 1-844-COSENTIX or visit cosentix.com. All right, I brought in Ensure Max Protein to give you the protein you need with less of the sugar you don't. I'll take that. 30 grams of protein and one gram of sugar. Ensure Max Protein, now available in 12 counts. Stock up today. For over 25 years, Home Instead has helped seniors stay home. Now, staying home isn't just staying in the place they love, it's staying safe. Home Instead, to us, it's personal. Apple will begin opening some stores here in the U.S. this week. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, more Apple stores getting back to business. 25 Apple locations in the U.S. are reopening this week. They were reportedly in California, Washington State, Florida, and Hawaii, along with Oklahoma and Colorado. Some locations will only offer curbside pickup for online orders. Video game spending is at a record high because of the pandemic. The strong sales are in nearly every category, desktops, consoles, mobile, subscriptions, and more. The top selling games include Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, and Minecraft. And Facebook has rolled out a new avatar feature in the US. Now users can create cartoons of themselves to use in comments, stories, and messenger to go along with the like and other emojis on the platform. Those are your Tech Bytes. Have a great day. A million of them yesterday. Have you done yours yet? <laughs> no, I not yet. I I'm, I'm so old school. I'm still on the Bitmoji. <laughs> <laughs> Bitmoji. Yeah, but yeah. some of them are pretty, pretty, yeah. what, you know, close to what their users look like. I know. I've seen some of them. Mm -hmm. Pretty interesting. And, and others aren't even close at all. Wow. Yeah. 518 right now, 68 <laughs> degrees. Just being honest, oh. Marcus. Well, maybe the ones that aren't close, maybe they didn't use their picture. Yeah. Yeah, it's possible. Maybe they, you know, it's kind of like those people that go on the dating sites and they use somebody else's picture. <laughs> that happen happens? With, it could happen with the, could happen with the Bitmoji too. <laughs> yeah, I've seen your picture, Mark. That's not. Oh, <laughs> stop. Right now, so take a look at the roadways. Treaty one at just kill kidding, folks, just kidding. Uh, Highway 151 and 410, still no issues there. A little bit of construction, but nothing that's gonna slow you down. FM 1103 and 35, very, very dark out there, but no problems there. 410 at Highway 151. As you see, travel in all four directions still running smoothly. Let's take a look over here. Tweety one at Hildebrand. Now, I bet when those storms came in on Friday, this was not a fun place to be with the, those turns and curves just like that. No, it was coming down, but uh, it moved on out really, really quickly. So mm -hmm. most of the, any heavy, severe stuff was gone even by roughly one in the morning or so, midnight or so. But uh, back to the Bitmoji thing. Uh, 
guy that we used to work with, Jeremy, posted one, and it was an actual picture of David Beckham. He said, yeah, this Bitmoji thing looks just like me. Uh, even on a bad day, yeah. Yeah, not even close. Jeremy. And then somebody yeah. who said, um, I marked myself safe from Bitmojis. <laughs> like, that's pretty good. Yeah, hey, somebody a, caught a squirrel picnic in progress. Is, is that a friend of yours? Oh, be quiet. <laughs> and squirrels don't get along, but yes, yeah, so a squirrel enjoying their, we'll just call it brunch. So, you know, yeah. Great little, great picture. That's a natural diet versus your patio furniture cushions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was great yesterday because it was, it was terrorizing the cat. <laughs> oh, that was fun? Watching. Fun to watch. Kind of yeah. go like this and trying to find oh, the squirrels. Yeah, so, yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, it's. That's kind of sums up my weekend. Cats and squirrels. Uh, we've got clear skies right now, and uh, it's fairly pleasant when you step outside. Temperature is at 68 degrees. That's the normal low right now, the 30-year average low temperature. Helotus Rio Medina at 62, 63 up the road in Balverde, and the humidity. These numbers are okay. We've got some 50s in the hill country. That's pleasant anytime below 60. Uh, so 62 here in town, that's, again, you, it's not like you're going to sweat when you walk outside, anything like that. Uh, 66 in Pleasant, so a little bit higher humidity. We've got some pretty dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, so we are going to be uh, seeing some beautiful blue skies out there and really nothing but sunshine today. And the pattern we are in, yes, we're going to have hot temperatures, but the nice thing is we have kind of sinking air around here, so... We will get some drier air coming in here by the afternoon, so we'll have a little bit higher humidity in the morning, and then that'll be dropping down in the afternoon. So uh, dew points, will, except down here along the coastal plain, of course, but uh, elsewhere, humidity is going to be fairly nice. Then it's going to start to come back in here a bit more once we get into Wednesday. And this is what the computer model, obviously nothing today out there as far as any clouds. Same thing tomorrow. And then on Wednesday, we will start to see maybe a couple of extra clouds kind of hanging around here. And then we jump into, first of all, the uh, satellite picture, and you can see that we've got nothing going on around here as far as anything. And other than a big system up in the Great Lakes, there's nothing really upstream for us in the next couple of days. By Thursday, Friday, that's when we'll start to see some uh, showers around here. And the gee whiz right now is the first named storm of the season. That is Tropical Storm Arthur. It's a little bit ahead of schedule. Tropical season doesn't actually start until uh, the 1st of June and then goes through the end of November and the forecast is just going to take this thing and throw it out in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So it's not going to really have anything any concern, but except they're along the Outer Banks, they're going to get some uh, pretty good rain from that. 84 degrees today at noon, sunny skies, nice looking day and the humidity will be dropping down a little bit. It's going to be hot though, 93 degrees in the shade, fairly pleasant and tomorrow it's going to get even hotter, 98 and lower humidity in the afternoon, then 95 on Wednesday, so still on the hot side. Normal high being in the upper 80s right now. Uh, we will have a couple of showers around Thursday, Friday, even a few thunderstorms, and uh, kind of watch for things as it's looking right now on Thursday, Friday, and then a few showers over the weekend. So I think the better rain chances are going to be uh, probably Thursday, Friday, maybe Saturday as well, and then temperatures will at least drop down into the mid 80s. It's like a nice, cold, sweet tea couple of days ahead, right? I know. Mm -hmm. so a little break from the rain, I guess. That's right. Right. Thank you, Mike. Right now, we're at 522, 68 degrees. And next in your morning spotlight, more on a virtual benefit concert that will feature more than 50 music stars. Five twenty-five from online all-star concerts to the Billboard char charts, even a pandemic can't stop the music. Here's CNN's David Daniel with the Hollywood Minute. COVID-19 pandemic has devastated us all. And how about when you're a kid on the streets? It's scary for a lot of kids right now. A Night of Covenant House Stars is a virtual benefit concert featuring more than 50 stars. It's a fundraiser for Covenant House, which provides crisis care and ongoing support to homeless and trafficked youth. The show, Monday night at 8 Eastern, is on a variety of platforms. Info at covenanthouse.org. You've already won me over in spite of me. Alanis Morissette and the cast of Jagged Little Pill are holding their own live stream benefit. You Live, You Learn features conversations and performances by Morissette and the cast and crew of the show, which is based on Morissette's classic album of the same name. 
Proceeds go to COVID-19 emergency relief for members of the theater community. It's Tuesday night at 8 Eastern on the show's Facebook and YouTube pages. Talk to me nicely or don't talk to me at all. Even though they want me to, I ain't gonna never fall. Nav is back on top. The rapper's new album, Good Intentions, debuted at number one on the Billboard 200 album chart. His previous release, Bad Habits, also topped that chart. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. 527, 68 degrees. And still ahead in our next half hour, cases of the coronavirus are expected to rise as states reopen. More on the president's latest response to the restart of the economy. Plus, several European nations taking similar step and steps rather to reopen. And economists say it could be a preview of what's to happen here at home. And good morning to you. It's 5.30 on Monday, May 18th. Thanks for joining us this morning. Um, the rain is gone for now. It is. So. Yeah, and it wasn't a bad weekend weather-wise. We're already looking ahead to this work week and some rising heat here in South Texas, Mike Coaster. Hey. Yes, indeed. Uh, temperatures, normal highs, upper 80s. We're going to be oh anywhere, well, today about 5 degrees above that to by tomorrow. In a lot of cases, 10 or more above that. Clear skies right now, and we saw this uh, beautiful little sliver of a moon. It's kind of moved out of this, uh, this shot right now, but it's going to be a gorgeous sunrise when the sun finally does come up later on in the next, uh, what, about, so we'll probably start seeing the glow of the sunrise by a little after 6 o'clock, I would imagine. 68 here in town, 61 burning, 60 in comfort. Normal low temperature as of right now. We've got still got fairly dry air and clear skies. We may actually drop down another uh, degree or so. Molds on the high side from all the moisture, of course. That should be dropping down in the next couple of days over the course of the next couple of days, just given the fact that we uh, don't have anything as far as any rain. And we do, though, have an ozone action day in effect for the metropolitan area today. As far as temperatures, 84 at noon and then 93, normal high being 88, sunny and hot. The one little saving grace, though, is the fact that we're getting into a pattern where we have a little bit more humidity, even though it's not bad this morning, a little more humidity in the morning, and then it is going to be dropping down in the afternoon. That'll be the case today and tomorrow. Tomorrow, Boy, we can really add to that number. Details coming up, plus a look ahead to maybe some more rain chances. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything yet, sir? So far, so good out there on the roadways. Mike, we're doing great out there. So let's take another look through Trans Guide. 21 in Hildebrand, north and southbound lane still running smoothly there around that curve. Highway 151 and 410, we see no problems there on that west side of San Antonio. Then moving over to Highway 98, Lackland, still dark out there. We have a few vehicles on the roadway, but nothing that will delay you this morning. Stephanie? Mark? Thanks, Marcus. Almost every state is entering the week with eased COVID-19 restrictions. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, some health officials worry that it will lead to a rise in confirmed cases. Many Americans are now leaving the house as stay at home or shelter in place orders are lifted in dozens of states. Everyone's watching this to see what this grand experiment is going to, 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 to result in. But we know for, for an absolute certainty that as you increase physical interactions between people, you are going to increase the number of new cases. According to Johns Hopkins University, there are nearly 90,000 confirmed coronavirus-related deaths in the U.S. And CDC Director Dr. Robert Redfield says the U.S. will likely pass 100,000 deaths by June 1st. We do not have good restrictions or a good good uh, guidelines in place for people how to reopen. It's going to become very confusing for people. We're going to see more and more cases. President Trump has repeatedly stressed the importance of states reopening as one way to strengthen the struggling economy. We're committed to delivering a vaccine. We're going to put the full power of the U.S. government and our private sector towards getting to a vaccine. But that's one part of a multifactorial response program. As the U.S. waits for a vaccine to be available, Americans are moving onward. I think the most I'm going to have on a job is four, maybe, and that's a lot different. I mean, we used to have seven, eight guys on jobs, so things might take a little longer, but at least we're going to be safe moving forward. I'm John Lawrence reporting. In your morning consumer headlines, Kroger will be spending $130 million to say thank you to its employees for working during the pandemic. The company says the one-time payment to its workers is to acknowledge their dedication during this unprecedented time. As part of the thank you pay, full-time employees will receive an extra $400, while part-time associates will get half of that. The news comes after the company handed out hero bonuses during the months of April and May. Ford says it will provide coronavirus testing for workers who show symptoms of COVID-19. The automaker announced the plan ahead of reopening some factories today. 
where it says it will give the test to symptomatic workers in Michigan, Kentucky, Missouri, and Illinois. It says results should be available within 24 hours. And if someone tests positive, Ford plans to ask those who interacted with that person to self-quarantine for 14 days. The company also says it will check temperatures and make employees wear masks. Krispy Kreme has a treat for graduating seniors, free donuts. The shops are offering a so-called 2020 graduation dozen. Half the donuts say two, the other half have holes. So together they spell out the year 2020. Krispy Kreme is selling the sweets May 18th to May 24th. High school and college grads who can prove their seniors can get a free box tomorrow. Right now we're at 535, 68 degrees. And coming up next, a closer look at how other countries are reopening their economies particularly Greece, which is showing a lot of success. Outside with live cam, the heat is on over the next few days, and we'll look ahead to the Memorial Day long holiday weekend. And welcome back to GMSA. Right now it's 538. Looking overseas now, several European nations take similar steps to reopen their economies. ABC foreign correspondent James Longman traveled to Greece where they are showing surprising success. But the question is now, can they prevent a second wave? Greece is emerging as Europe's unlikely hero in the battle against coronavirus. As its lockdown eases, its ancient sites prepare to reopen. The Parthenon will welcome local visitors again. But a modern miracle, its numbers. With nearly 11 million people, Greece has recorded just 163 deaths and more than 2,800 cases. Officials say not a single healthcare worker has died. We've just arrived. You have to fill in some forms. Yeah, sure. A key to their success, these border health checks at the airport since March 20. You have to fill out a form and then everybody on that plane has a mouth swab. All new arrivals are then taken to specially designated hotels to await results. And if negative, released to a 14-day quarantine at home. <laughs> But major tests lie ahead. This is the first weekend Greeks have been allowed back onto the beach. We're at a beach just outside of Athens. And look, it's almost like coronavirus never happened. It's like it's freedom. Also, it's freedom. A country that relies on tourism will need to get this right. That the priority is, uh, the, is the safety of all people. And if you had a message for people now watching this around the world, what would it be? come to Greece, the, the message could be that Greece is one of the safest countries all over the world. Greece may allow foreign tourists back in as early as next month, although there are no definite plans. The challenge will be stopping them from creating a second wave. For now, Greece is proud of the example it has set. James Longman, ABC News in Athens. 539, 68 degrees. Coming up next, President Donald Trump and former President Barack Obama take new shots at each other in what could be a preview of the weeks and months ahead. By 42, former President Barack Obama commenting on recent actions by current President Donald Trump. In a pair of commencement addresses, former President Obama told graduates that the administration's COVID-19 response shows that leaders don't know what they're doing. ABC's Rachel Scott has more. Former President Barack Obama off the sidelines, taking on the Trump administration. This pandemic has fully, finally torn back the curtain on the idea that so many of the folks in charge know what they're doing. A lot of them aren't even pretending to be in charge. Obama, largely silent for President Trump's first three years in office, delivered a pointed critique in two commencement addresses this weekend. Doing what feels good, what's convenient, what's easy, that's how little kids think. Unfortunately, a lot of so-called grown-ups, including some with fancy titles and important jobs, still think that way, which is why things are so screwed up. That public rebuke echoing what he said privately on a leaked call with former staffers. It has been an absolute chaotic disaster. Obama saying he'll do everything he can to get his vice president into the Oval Office. On Twitter, President Trump firing up his base, accusing Obama of committing unspecified crimes in an effort to undermine the 2016 election and his presidency. This was all Obama. This was all Biden. These people were corrupt. 
alleging without evidence they had some sort of a legal role in the FBI investigation into President Trump's first national security advisor, Michael Flynn. We have a health crisis. This is all about diverting attention. Focus on what's in front of us. Today, the president said he had not seen Obama's recent jab, but fired back anyway. He was an incompetent president. That's all I can say. Grossly incompetent. Thank you. And that was ABC's Rachel Scott reporting. Starting today, Detroit's big three automakers all getting ready to reopen U.S. plants. Fiat, Chrysler, GM, and Ford all say new precautions have been put into place and to try to cut down on the spread of the coronavirus. That includes partitions around workstations and tests for workers when they arrive. And merger talks continue between two of the biggest names in food delivery. That's Grubhub and Uber. The Wall Street Journal says Grubhub said no to Uber's latest offer, calling the price too low. The deal would combine Grubhub with Uber Eats. Hi all, good morning. It's Erica Hernandez here with another KSAT Kids News Brief. We start this morning with a look at a recent school parade through the eyes of our Stephanie Serna's daughter, Rooney. Rooney's excited, I think. <laughs> kind of last minute, mom couldn't make it. I know she's uh, working. Hi. Well, when it got there, it was even colder than I thought. Gracias, los extrañamos. My principal's there saying hi. Rooney! Ready, ready, ready! It was like festive. The cars were decorated, all the teachers' cars. Hi, My other teacher from PK4. Hi, So we went to our school and say hi to everybody. I went like this. My teacher from Kinder, she had to do a smile on her face, even though she had a mask, but it looked like she had a smile on her face. I love you. I miss you. I miss you too. It was so fun. The parade was awesome. I really want to go back to school. Mark Twain Academy, best school in San Antonio. It's English and Spanish. I need to learn more Spanish than English. I miss you, Rooney. It was fabulous. Thank you, Mark Twain. Have you ever seen one of these? They are commonly known as blue dragons, and this one was found at Padre Island National Seashore. They are fun to see and watch, but keep your distance. They have venomous cells, and their sting is powerful. Now, this was just a short clip of our KSAT Kids News Brief. You can see the entire episode on our KSAT Kids page right now on KSAT.com. Hope you all have a good week. Uh, the little girl in that story looked familiar to me. Oh, yeah. Familiar yeah. to me, too. Why does she look like a mini you? <laughs> really? You think so? Everybody thinks she <laughs> looks bit. like my husband. Nah. <laughs> um, and she, uh, we actually have it on tape, her saying, I want to go back to school. She, yeah, so that's remember right. That. She, she did say that. Yes, no, that, that really did come from the heart. And, yeah. you know, thank you to you know, all the teachers who do this. It's actually it's a, a teacher appreciation parade, but I think the students got more out of it. So oh. thank you so much. Well, Rooney did a great job. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. 547. 68 degrees. Here's Marcus and then Mike. Well, uh, Mark and 70 still no accidents out there, so the highways are still looking pretty good. As we move from the map over to Transguide, we're seeing slight increases in the traffic, like right here, 35 at Schwab Road, both in the north and the southbound lanes. Moving over to Fort to Nicolet, not too bad there on the inner loop, and then 35 at FM 42, definitely getting a little bit busier. 281 at Hildebrand, no problems there. Sun's trying to come up out there. What's the word this morning, Mike? Pleasant. Pleasant. Yeah. I mean, Pleasant. We, have, we have temperatures that are, are seasonable. We're in okay. the mid upper 60s right now. Humidity's okay. It's going to be okay today, but it's going to be hot the next couple of days. So mm -hmm. if you're in the shade with a nice, tall, cool glass of lemonade, you're going to be perfect. just fine. Nice we'll tea. be prepared. Yes, indeed. And enjoy the f and smell the roses or sunflowers. So as <laughs> like these. Like this. Yes. yes. I didn't realize there were different variations. I don't know a lot about plants, so really? that kind of goes without saying, but this is a Japanese sunflower. Beautiful out there. Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. One little note, not to look a gift horse in the mouth, but if you can, please turn your camera sideways, okay? We'd, we'd appreciate that if you could do that. Still, it's a beautiful picture, but uh, if you don't mind doing your...
bone horizontally. But beautiful picture. Thank you very much. And yeah, we're starting to see the glow already of the uh, sunrise this morning. It's going to be beautiful out there. 62 in Holota, 69 Canyon Lake, 59 up the road in Comfort. And humidity below 60 for dew point temperatures. The measure of moisture in the atmosphere and is really comfortable. We're at 62, so it's not bad. Uh, mid 60s down here around Randolph, Portis, A. Stinson, and then 50s out in the hill country. A lot of dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, which is why we're going to see a beautiful sunrise and beautiful sunny skies all day long today. And the humidity, we're in a pattern where uh, it's going to be just a bit higher in the morning and then dropping down somewhat in the afternoon with some sinking air. And so that's going to be the situation tomorrow as well. But of course, this, with that sinking air, it's one of the reasons why we do have the uh, Ozone Action Day in effect today for the uh, metropolitan area. Uh, Tomorrow, again, nice humidity in the afternoon. Then it starts to come back in on Wednesday morning. And yes, it will drop down somewhat, but I think it's going to stay a little bit higher because that's going to be starting to transition into a, a rainy uh, period once we get into Thursday and Friday. Nothing as far as clouds today or tomorrow. And then Wednesday, a couple of extra clouds around here. We'll have some in the morning and maybe one or two of them sticking around in the afternoon. Nothing as far as uh, showing up, obviously, on the satellite picture right now. And nothing in the short term coming in here upstream off to the east. There's the G whiz for the morning. That is the first tropical storm of the season. It is tropical storm Arthur and it's just going to take a path. It's going to keep it way out there in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean. So uh, other than some rain and heavy surf around the uh, outer banks, nothing is going to be going on. So we've got this ridge sort of building. Whoop, just jump past that. Sorry about that. Look at that later, but we've got a ridge building in here and that's why we're going to be uh, heating up. But then we do have some rain chances coming in here once we get in toward the latter portion of the week. 84 degrees today at noon, sunny skies, really nice looking day, little bit of humidity this morning. It will be dropping down in the afternoon, so fairly pleasant in the in the shadows, but you get out in the direct sun. And again, these numbers are taken in the readings in the shade in the shade, I should say. And then if you get out in the direct sun, it makes it feel like it's about 10, 15 degrees hotter than that. So obviously with these kind of hot temperatures, do take it easy. And then tomorrow's going to be even hotter, 98 degrees in the afternoon. Fairly pleasant humidity, though. 95 on Wednesday, a couple of extra clouds. Then we get into Thursday and Friday, and we're going to be seeing a chance for a couple of showers, thunderstorms, maybe a... A couple of stronger thunderstorms here and there and still some rain around over the weekend, but temperatures are going to be dropping down to the mid 80s once we get into the weekend. And for Memorial Day itself, you have any idea right now? Right Mike? now, long rain is still, you know, week away, but a couple of showers out there. OK, we okay. can get back to you tomorrow or the day after. Right. Or right. the day after that, if you want. <laughs> we'll keep sure, checking I'll be in here all week. OK, all right. Well, too. <laughs> all right. 551, 68 degrees and still ahead. A unique look at how Artists are making music videos right now during the COVID-19 quarantine. We have all your lottery numbers starting off with pick three, six, one, zero, fireball, zero, daily four numbers, eight, nine, three, zero, fireball, zero. Cash five, three, seven, 24, 26, 31. And your lotto Texas numbers, two, 17, 31, 33, 34, 37. And your Powerball numbers, 8, 12, 26, 39, 42, Powerball 11, Power Play 2. Good luck. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the debate over reopening the country and its restrictions. Coast to coast, crowded beaches, packed boardwalks, all this as new hot spots are popping up around the country. And the new headline overnight from the Fed chairman now warning that the economic pain from this pandemic could go well into next year. You'll see it all coming up right here on GMA. To release as we were still creating the album this time and um, let songs live kind of independently and release them one by one and give them like a special moment. Yeah. And we obviously, you know, are working within new constraints. Everybody is. Um, and I was just thinking about how we could be together apart. It is. It's been nine years. That's why wow. I'm not going to let I'm not going to let another year go by. We're doing this no matter what This is happening. About three two right now, almost to the top of the hour. Still ahead in the next hour, GMSA, Governor Abbott preparing to give another update on reopening Texas businesses later today. We have a preview plus a look at local gyms 
that can now welcome back customers starting today. And TransGuide, Officer Marcus Trujillo will have an update coming up in a few minutes and another look at the uh, work week forecast with meteorologist Mike Osterhage. The sun is coming up. Stick around, we have more GMSA coming up next. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases here in Texas is rising. I'm Max Mass. I'll have the latest details and why we won't have specific Bear County numbers until later this evening. Local leaders concerned that rising temperatures could lead to rising crowds and in turn a rise in coronavirus cases. I'm Alex Perche in Washington with details on the now 49 states relaxing restrictions. Wow, beautiful sunrise out there to start your Monday morning. If you like the heat, Mike goes straight to Mother Nature have Shall we say a gift for you this week? <laughs> Good morning. Thanks oh, for hi. joining Good us. Good morning, everybody. <laughs> it is 6 o'clock on your Monday. It is May 18th. We hope you had a great weekend. Yes, thanks for joining us again. And I hope you're ready for the heat. It will be here. It will be here this week. And then Mike says we're not done with the rain chances in the long term. Which, I mean, if this could be a good pattern, you know, had some rain Friday night. And if we could get some more by the end of the week after this little hot stretch, that would be just fantastic. So well, we focus on the now and the now right now is yeah, great. That's one of those just doesn't take any words to describe it. Absolutely beautiful. And uh, yeah, it is going to be hot. Right now, we're at a normal low temperature, 68 degrees, 59 Bernie stage, 60 in comfort, and 65 at Randolph. The humidity is okay this morning. You know, you kind of notice it a little bit when you step outside, but it's fairly pleasant. It's been higher in the past few mornings uh, in weeks past. Mold is on the high side, low amounts of pig, pigweed, as well as uh, grass. And uh, we do have an ozone action day in effect for the metropolitan area today. As far as temperatures, we are going to go from a normal low right around the mid upper 60s and warm up very quickly throughout the rest of the morning. Going to make it up into the uh, mid and in some cases even the upper 80s by noon. And then we'll top off right around the low to mid 90s. And that means some mid and even upper 90s along the Rio Grande Valley. Humidity, though, is going to be uh, pleasant this afternoon. It will drop down a little bit. We're in that pattern. Where where we have some higher humidity in the mornings and then it drops down somewhat in the afternoon. That's going to be the case tomorrow. But boy, it's going to be even hotter tomorrow. We'll talk about that and check out those rain chances later on in the week. Time saver traffic right now. Officer Marcus Trujillo and you really haven't been talking about too awfully much. That's an interesting picture there. It is Smile an interesting mark. picture. Maybe we should just take the maps full. There we go. That's better. We'll just take the maps full. How's that? Uh, right now, as we take a look at the roadways, still uh, not too bad out there. You can see that Everything's clear. So traffic starting to pick up in some areas, uh, like here in the downtown vicinity, 35, 37, and no problems there, 281 at Hildebrand. Mark? Thank you very much, Marcus. Well, Mayor Ron Nierberg says as more tests for the virus become available, the number of positive COVID-19 cases goes up. The two days with the highest amount of confirmed cases in Bear County was May 1st and 2nd. Both days saw more than 100 new cases. Max Massey keeping a close eye on this story joins us live downtown. Max, when it comes to the numbers, what else jumped out from the latest press conference? Well, even without the latest specific numbers here in Bear County, which I'll get to in a second, the mayor says with the increase of testing, he still doesn't expect to see another peak here in Bear County. In fact, when we talk about those numbers, even with the increased amount of testing, the percentage of positive tests have gone down. He says that it's about half of what we saw in April. So let's take a look at the numbers and what we learned from last night's press conference. So when I talked about those numbers, I mentioned the specific confirmed cases of Bear County. Numbers were not released over the weekend, and that's because Metro Health had the weekend off. Officials say that this was only the second weekend that employees had off in 115 days since the outbreak began. We did get an update on hospitalizations and the jail numbers. The mayor says there are 70 patients in the hospital, an increase of four from two days ago, 31 of which are in the ICU, and 16 are on ventilators. Hospital capacity is at 78%, and 33%, so about a third of the hospital beds, they are still available. And at last check, 1,100 or 1,611 inmates have been tested so far. 319 inmates, they were confirmed positive with the virus without symptoms, 74 positive with symptoms, and no inmates 
have been hospitalized. Now, we do expect to get those latest specific numbers for Bear County at the daily press briefing later this evening. And that's not all we expect today. At 2 o'clock, we expect to hear from Governor Greg Abbott the latest phasing of reopening Texas. Stephanie, Mark. Thank you, Max. City officials have not reported any COVID-19 cases among the homeless population, but that doesn't mean those cases don't exist. Our Sarah Costa joins us live from her home with the city's efforts when it comes to COVID-19 and the homeless population. Good morning, Stephanie. Well, the city leaders say that they are working to make sure marginalized groups are not forgotten during this coronavirus pandemic, and the homeless population is one of those groups. One of the groups that homeless population has steadily increased in the last few months. Councilman Roberto Trevino says the city is working to reach out to homeless groups by establishing hubs that provide health and sanitation kits, but connecting with the homeless has been difficult, he says. It's very difficult to know what's going on uh, with them and their health. People simply hide and go into the shadows rather than go and accept services that we can provide them. Councilman Roberto Trevino says Haven for Hope continues to follow CDC guidelines and has restricted the amount of people they could accept. He did say that there have been a spike in encampments, especially along the freeways in some areas of the city. Reporting live from home, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. During last night's COVID-19 daily briefing, Mayor Nirenberg also reminded everyone today's been declared an ozone action day. Those days typically observed during summer months when weather, in this case air pollution, can cause or greatly affect existing health conditions. As the mayor said, those with pre-existing respiratory conditions, the elderly and very young, are encouraged to stay home today. Bear County Commissioner Justin Rodriguez announcing a partnership between the city and the county to provide essential item bags for small businesses. The new program allows business owners to pick up a free one-week supply of safety items, including personal protective equipment, touchless thermometers, gloves, face masks, and plexiglass barriers if they're needed. This is strictly for businesses with less than 25 employees. Registration for the bags can be completed on either the city's website or the county's. We're going to provide a link to those websites at our website at kset.com. Well, gyms all across Texas set to reopen today. And as people are anxious to hit the weights, there are some restrictions you'll need to follow. There will only be a 25% capacity allowed inside those gyms. They should be providing disinfecting wipes and hand sanitizer to customers and everyone's require, required to wear gloves. In the next half hour, Max Massey will have details on more on what to expect as you head back to the gym. Restrictions in almost all 50 states are relaxing this morning as the U.S. reaches a new milestone, 1.5 million cases of COVID-19. And that death toll now standing at more than 89,000. ABC's Alex Perche has more from Washington. Across the country, warm weather making social distancing more difficult. This was a scene in New York City over the weekend. Crowds outside of bars, their to-go drinks in hand. I'm not comfortable at all with people congregating outside bars. And if we have to shut places down, we will. The crowds worrisome for city leaders, but bars and restaurants have been hit hard by the pandemic. Restaurant owners now telling researchers if the crisis lasts six months, they'll have about a 15% chance of survival. As of today, nearly every state is easing restrictions though several are seeing a rise in cases, according to a New York Times analysis. That includes Texas, which is looking to lift additional restrictions. The Lone Star State had more than 700 new cases reported near Amarillo on Saturday, many stemming from meatpacking plants. Texas has tested just under 700,000 people. It has a population of 29 million. Quarantine fatigue is setting in. In Florida, chaos after a large group gathered for a block party near Orlando. Seven people were arrested after deputies say they were hit with glass bottles. This as the state eases restrictions on gyms in New Jersey, allowing curbside pickup at retail stores. But federal chairman Jerome Powell warning of a long road to recovery. This economy will recover. It may take a while. It may take a, a period of time. It could stretch through the end of next year. We really don't know. And speaking of the recovery, President Trump, who's been pushing to get the country back up and running, even making an unannounced call into a live PGA event, saying that he was happy that pro golfers were back out on the greens. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington.
Back here at home, there still continues to be a need for blood and plasma donations. Recovered COVID-19 patients urged to donate in an effort to assist those still fighting the virus. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center will be holding a blood drive at the Alamo Dome May 21st through the 23rd. Though the wish to donate need to make an appointment. For more information, you can visit SouthTexasBlood.org or call the number on your screen, 731-5590. As an extra incentive, all donors uh, in May will receive an HEB gift card. New this morning, San Antonio police searching for a man who pulled a knife on a convenience store clerk. Take a look. This man at the Lucky 7 Food Mart on South Forest Street back in April when he reportedly assaulted the clerk, walked inside the store to purchase beer and began yelling racial comments towards the clerk. When the workers chose not to serve him, he grabbed merchandise and threw it at the clerk, walked around the counter and pulled out a knife, striking him in the top of the head. If you have any information that may lead to an arrest, you can ask to call Crime Stoppers. You may be eligible for reward of up to $5,000. Right now, 610, 68 degrees. The bread basket of the online marketplace still ahead where many shopping is happening right now. Plus, a new read during your quarantine. When you can buy the new Hunger Games prequel later this week. Today in our great grad series, we introduce you to a Bernie High School softball standout who's on her way to Notre Dame. That's coming up on GMSA. And taking a look outside with live cam, beautiful shot out there. It's actually feeling pretty nice right now, 68 degrees. Enjoy it. It's going to warm up. We're going to check it with Mike in just a bit. Welcome back 614 with uh, it's been a senior year with so many uncertainties, but one Bernie High School seniors trying to rise above it all. Just focus on her bright, bright future. This morning in our great graduate series, our Erica Hernandez introduces us to softball superstar Mackenzie Vasquez. The softball fields have been empty this season. COVID-19 restricting any kind of UIL play this spring. I think what was most upsetting for me was the cancellation of our softball season. Actually, we had a really good team this year. McKenzie has had a very successful high school career in softball, a starter all four years and first team all state in Texas, which means her softball career is not over. I had a few other offers. And so um, when I actually got the call from Notre Dame, I was sitting in chemistry class and um, my dad called me, told me the news and I was so excited. I knew right then there I was going to Dame, I was going to commit there. McKenzie will be heading to South Bend, Indiana this August to attend the University of Notre Dame, but until then she is trying to enjoy her final days as a senior in high school. I think it's tough just understanding that we're not going to get some of the um, regular privileges that most seniors got. Um, but luckily our community has been so great in going the extra mile to recognize us. And she offers a bit of advice for other students about to become seniors. Just don't take anything for granted. Just live it up while you can and um, take advantage of, this, of these moments. Not only did McKenzie succeed on the softball field, but also in the classroom, finishing in the top 10% of her senior class at Bernie High School. We wish her the best of luck at Notre Dame University. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Full of positivity and perseverance. Yes, I know it was tough not having the season, but mm -hmm. wow, now she's headed to big, bigger, bigger, bigger oh, things. She has an amazing future. Yeah. Congratulations. Congrats, McKenzie. Let's check traffic right now. It is 616. Marcus, what is the latest, sir? Well, right now, things uh, still look pretty good. No word on any accidents on the highways. However, I'm looking up here to the very, very top. We're looking at uh, westbound 1604. They're headed to... Uh, from about uh, Judson back over towards 281. It looks like there's a little bit of slowdown, so let's see if an accident doesn't pop up in the next minute or two, but currently things still look pretty good. This is uh, I-10 at Ralph Fair Road all the way through Bernie Stage Road. You see no issues there. Moving on to, there we go, FM 30, 35 at FM 1103, just a couple of vehicles on the roadway, so a little bit busy there, FM 3009. So far, things are progressing nicely. Thank you very much, Marcus. More photographic skills being put yep. to the test. Some great submissions to KSAT Connect. So many pretty flower pictures. 
that we've seen. Not only, you know, usually it's just it's the blue bonnets, but uh, this past couple of months, folks have been sending in some great shots there. And that's a great one of uh, downtown, the beautiful blue skies. We're going to have those kind of blue skies again today. And boy, you want a pretty picture. Look at that one. Oh my goodness, that is gorgeous out there and it's going to turn into or continue on into a just sensational day. 68 in town, 62 Bernie or excuse me, Balverde, Bernie 59 and same thing Comfort and Kerrville. Nice temperatures, humidity is OK in most areas. Now it's kind of getting up there. You notice it a little bit more Stinson as well as down around Pleasanton. 62 for a dew point is not bad. This being the measure of moisture in the atmosphere and that's how you factor in or to factor and get uh, relative humidity. We've got a lot of dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, so that's why we're seeing those beautiful blue skies and blue skies all day long. And the humidity is uh, going to be dropping down a little bit in the afternoon. We're into this pattern where we have a bit more in the way of humidity in the morning, and then we drop down uh, once the uh, atmosphere starts to sink a little bit toward the afternoon. So it comes back up, humidity does tomorrow morning, and then it'll drop down in the afternoon. However, tomorrow, it's going to be even hotter in the afternoon. So at least thank goodness we're going to have low humidity because temperatures are going to be well up into the upper 90s tomorrow. Humidity dew points are going to be definitely coming up as we go in toward Wednesday and kind of sticking around a little bit. So this is what it looks like with the computer model going in through today. Nothing as far as cloud covers. Same thing tomorrow. Nothing. And then a few more clouds starting off on Wednesday and perhaps uh, maybe a little bit of mist in the morning. That'll be about it. And then more sunshine in the afternoon. Now jumping ahead to Wednesday night and Thursday, we do have more clouds and we do have a chance for a few showers, even a couple of thunderstorms. As of right now, the atmosphere may be a little bit on the uh, maybe a little bit on the volatile side on Thursday and Friday. So a couple of stronger storms could be possible as it looks right now. Friday again, more uh, showers, a couple of thunderstorms. Same thing on Saturday and um, perhaps going into Sunday as well. So now it won't be raining constantly, but we will have those chances for some rain around here once we head in toward the uh, latter half of the week or last two days of the week and the weekend. 84 degrees today at noon, sunny skies, an absolutely gorgeous, gorgeous day, and then a high temperature today up to 93, so about five above normal, and then make it about 10 above normal tomorrow. We start off 67 and get all the way up into the upper 90s, a lot of low hundreds around there. The record here in San Antonio is 101 tomorrow, so it'll be close but I don't think we're going to be hitting it tomorrow and then 95 on Wednesday. At least temperatures do drop down into the about mid 80s by the weekend, but we do have some rain chances starting Thursday. Ouch. I mean, May 18th or 19th, they we're talking about near 100 degree temperatures. Yeah. All right. Toasty. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. 620, 68 degrees. You're watching GMSA. And people are turning to Etsy to buy everything from masks to baked goods. Coming up next, why the company is seeing a boom in business. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a Polar Pop. We are Circle K. Hi, I'm Bob Harper, and I recently had a heart attack. It changed my life, but I'm a survivor. After my heart attack, my doctor prescribed Berlinta. It's for people who have been hospitalized for a heart attack. Berlinta is taken with a low dose aspirin, no more than 100 milligrams, as it affects how well Berlinta works. Berlinta helps keep platelets from sticking together and forming a clot. In a clinical study, Berlinta worked better than platelets. Berlinta reduced the chance of having another heart attack or dying from one. Don't stop taking Berlinta without talking to your doctor, since stopping it too soon increases your risk of clots in your stent. Heart attacks stroke, and even death. Berlinta may cause bruising or bleeding more easily or serious, sometimes fatal bleeding. Don't take Berlinta if you have bleeding, like stomach ulcers, a history of bleeding in the brain, or severe liver problems. Slow heart rhythm has been reported. Tell your doctor about bleeding, new or unexpected shortness of breath, any planned surgery, and all medicines you take. If you recently had a heart attack, ask your doctor if Berlinta is right for you. My heart is worth Berlinta. If you can't afford your medication, AstraZeneca may be able to help. In this morning's GMA First Look, call it the Etsy economy. I didn't think people would be spending money and shopping this way during the pandemic, but I just didn't think about the fact that food is comfort. So right now people want biscuits. Suzanne McMinn is one of the many sellers on Etsy whose business is booming. The website has become a lifeline for small business, and this morning we're going one-on-one -on -one with Etsy CEO Josh Silverman. 
Josh, what have you seen on Etsy since the pandemic began? You know, there's really been an explosion of demand on Etsy. It's such a great opportunity for small bakeries who've been so hard hit by the crisis to move on to Etsy and then find buyers. So how can you take a side hobby and turn it into an Etsy side hustle? We'll have much more of our interview coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Rebecca Jarvis, ABC News, New York. Well, some Apple stores are getting back to business. 25 more Apple locations in the U.S. are reopening this week. They are in California, Washington State, Florida, and Hawaii, along with some in Oklahoma and Colorado. Some locations will only offer curbside pickup for online orders. And video game spending is at a record high because of the pandemic. The strong sales are in nearly every category, desktops, consoles, mobile subscriptions, and more. The top selling games include Call of Duty, Modern Warfare, and Minecraft. Well, fans of The Hunger Games are excited about a new release this week. The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes by best-selling author Suzanne Collins is a prequel to The Hunger Games series. The book takes place 64 years before the events of the original novel. The original Hunger Games novel was on the New York Times bestseller list for more than 260 weeks. With more than 100 million copies sold, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes expected to hit store shelves coming up on May 19th. Boy, just about perfect timing, right? I was going to say very timely, yes. A Are you a Hunger Games fan? The, well, I need to check out the books. The I've movies, never read yes. the books. Movies. Movies, yes. That's where they got us all, right? <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good. <laughs> Time now, 626 and 68 degrees for now. Two NFL players out on bond after being charged with several counts of armed robbery. We have details coming up right here on Good Morning San Antonio. Plus the latest details involving a war of words between President Donald Trump and former President Barack Obama. That's coming up next on GMSA. And back here at home as we check the roads with TransGuide. Yeah, it looks like another Monday with even more cars on the roads out there. As we scan those cameras, we'll check back in with Officer Marcos Trujillo. Time saver traffic still to come. Today marks another big milestone for Texas reopening. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. I'll have the latest details and what we can expect from Governor Greg Abbott later today. President Trump and former President Obama have disagreements over how the coronavirus pandemic is being handled. We have details on GMSA. And taking a look outside with live cam, a shaky shot there of downtown San Antonio. Maybe a little bit wind. It's 68 degrees for now, though. Looking good. Downtown bathed in that early morning sunlight. And good morning to you. It is Monday. It is May 18th. Good morning, gentlemen. Good How morning. Are How are we looking, Marcus? Uh, so far, so good on the highways. Right now, no reports of any accidents. Still a little bit of a slowdown, but uh, no information yet on what that little bit of slowdown is. Westbound 1604, up there between Green Mountain Road, Judson, uh, as you're approaching Bulverde. Okay. Mike's early morning forecast is cake today. You know, you asked how things are looking. Just take a look at this picture. It's absolutely gorgeous out there. We have got uh, clear skies, light wind, and humidity's okay this morning. It's fairly pleasant when you step outside and just absolutely gorgeous. Sun's going to be coming up in just a few minutes there. It's going to be a great looking sunrise, obviously. 61 in Helotus, 63 Bandera, and 59 in Comfort. And mold is on the high side, low amounts of pigweed as well as grass. We do have an ozone action day in effect for San Antonio and the metropolitan area, all the uh, surrounding counties today. Uh, clear and fairly pleasant. Again, humidity is okay. Then sunny, it's going to be hot today. We'll make it up into the uh, low and mid 90s. Humidity, though, is going to be tolerable. As a matter of fact, we'll see humidity drop off just a a little bit in the afternoon. That's going to be the same situation tomorrow, but it is going to get hotter tomorrow. We're looking at upper 90s and even some triple digits, especially along the Rio Grande Valley tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday is going to be a pretty nice day. Then by the end of the week, Thursday, Friday, some scattered showers, a couple of thunderstorms, and we'll drop down into the mid 80s once we get in toward the weekend, but we'll still have some rain chances around here. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. So the only problem is that one up there on uh, just a little bit of a floor. slowdown up there, but uh, everything else seems to be moving fairly well. So we're going to move over to TransGuide right now and take a look at a couple of cameras. This is 35 604. As we're looking back towards that area, it seems to be moving along at a decent pace. So just remember, once you head out, make sure you buckle up and put away those distractions, those cell phones and those coffee cups. Mark and Stephanie.
Thanks, Marcus. A lot of states are beginning to ease coronavirus restrictions, and here in Texas, we're set to take another big step towards reopening today. Our Max Massey joins us live downtown. Max, tell us about the big news this morning. Guys, it is big news for gyms and big news for fitness lovers. But here's the thing. When gyms reopen today, don't expect everything to go back to normal. You can't just mosey in there. There are new precautions and big changes that you should expect. So take a look. Now, one of the biggest changes that you're going to notice when you head back to the gym, less people, a 25% maximum capacity rule. Also, make sure if you are headed back to the gym, give yourself more time to get back home and get ready because locker rooms and showers are off limits. Both restrictions are state mandated. Now, we've seen gyms preparing to reopen their doors, concepts being put in place like blocking off every other piece of equipment, some even sharing pictures of barriers, physical barriers between fitness machines, doing what they can to add more social distancing between those who are exercising. Now, this is the latest step in reopening the state of Texas, but later today at 2 p.m., we expect to hear from Governor Greg Abbott, and we expect to hear about another phase of reopening. We're going to be streaming that on KSAT and KSAT.com. Also important to mention, 9 o'clock, GMSA at 9 a.m. We are going to be inside one of our local gyms and we're going to be walking you through the process and some of the precautions in place, making sure everyone is safe. Stephanie, Mark. Well, we turn now to the latest involving President Trump and former President Barack Obama as they take new shots at each other. ABC's Alex Perche shares the details of what could be a preview of the weeks and months ahead. This morning, the new war of words between President Trump and former President Obama ramping up. More than anything, this pandemic has fully finally torn back the curtain on the idea that so many of the folks in charge know what they're doing. A lot of them aren't even pretending to be in charge. During virtual commencement addresses this weekend, the former president slammed the current administration's response to the coronavirus. Doing what feels good, what's convenient, what's easy, that's how little kids think. Unfortunately, a lot of so-called grown-ups, including some with fancy titles and important jobs, still think that way which is why things are so screwed up. President Trump was asked to respond. I didn't hear it. Look, he was an incompetent president. That's all I can say, grossly incompetent. Just last week, former President Obama blasted the Trump administration during a call with former staffers, which was leaked to the media. It has been an absolute chaotic disaster. Meanwhile, President Trump is pushing, without evidence, claims that it was President Obama who was behind the Russia investigation, Trump even coining the term Obamagate. This was all Obama. This was all Biden. These people were corrupt. The whole thing was corrupt, and we caught them. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. In your morning headlines, a Canadian snowbird jet crashed into a neighborhood during a flyover intended to boost morale during the pandemic. One crew member died, another seriously injured. A house in the neighborhood there in British Columbia caught fire along with debris scattered throughout the area. The snowbirds are Canada's equivalent of the Air Force Thunderbirds and the Navy Blue Angels. NFL players Quentin Dunbar and DeAndre Baker are out on bond. A judge ordered Dunbar to pay $100,000. He's charged with four counts of armed robbery with a firearm following <coughs> a part in Miami. Now Baker's bond is twice as much since he's charged with both armed robbery and aggravated assault with a firearm. But their lawyers say they can prove the two did not commit these crimes. The Department of Homeland Security getting ready to advise the telecom industry about actions they can take to prevent 5G cell towers from getting attacked. This comes after numerous incidents in Western Europe that were ignited by fake claims that said the technology spread a pathogen that causes coronavirus. 5G is a technology that has very fast connections that can power items like self-driving cars and smart cities. President Donald Trump hosting a meeting with restaurant industry officials today. They will be talking about the impact of the coronavirus pandemic. A source familiar with the meeting says chefs and executives are among those expected to attend. The Independent Restaurant Coalition is expected to be represented at the meeting. The organization has shown concern about the Paycheck Protection Program. From nurses to caregivers to cashiers, there are hundreds of jobs available right now here in San Antonio. With many businesses reopening, many may want to hire you. Here are a few that may interest you. San Antonio ISD looking for five bus drivers. Applicants must have a safe driving record and pass a background check. Alamo College is looking for a senior advisor. Applicants must have a bachelor's degree and at least two years experience in a related field. And Johnson Controls needs a commercial security installer. The company looking for someone with a minimum of eight years 
of electronic equipment experience. If any of those jobs interest you, you can go to workintexas.com for more information. Right now, 637, 68 degrees. You're watching GMSA. Just ahead, in case you missed it, a feel-good story that's sure to put a smile on your face. It's all part of Case It Kids, and you don't want to miss it. Good morning, it's Erica Hernandez here with another KSAT Kids News Brief. We start this morning with a look at a recent school parade through the eyes of our Stephanie Serna's daughter, Rooney. Rooney's excited, I think. <laughs> kind of last minute, mom couldn't make it. I know she's uh, working. Hi. Well, when it got there, it was even cooler than I thought. Gracias, los extrañamos. My principal's there saying hi. Rooney! Ready, ready, ready! It was like festive. The cars were decorated, all the teachers' cars. Hi, My other teacher from P4. So we went to our school and say hi to everybody. I went like this. My teacher from Kinder, she had to do a smile on her face even though she had a mask, but it looked like she had a smile on her face. Bye, so you love you. I miss you. I miss you too. It was so fun. The parade was awesome. I really want to go back to school. Mark Twain the Academy. Best school in San Antonio. It's English and Spanish. I need to learn more Spanish than English. I miss you, Rooney. It was fabulous. Thank you, Mark Twain. Have you ever seen one of these? They are commonly known as blue dragons, and this one was found at Padre Island National Seashore. They are fun to see and watch, but keep your distance. They have venomous cells, and their sting is powerful. Now, this was just a short clip of our KSAT Kids News Brief. You can see the entire episode on our KSAT Kids page right now on KSAT.com. Hope you all have a good week. And if the little girl in that story looked familiar, it's her fault. <laughs> my fault, yes. Yeah, this is my little girl. Boy, did she enjoy that parade. A big th thank you to all the teachers, not just at her school, all the schools who are just, you know, reaching out to the students. They really miss you right now. And it's a teacher appreciation parade. I was telling Mark earlier, but I think the students got a lot more out of it. So oh, they really you. did, especially, especially Rooney. Yes. She did a great job. Oh, thank you. 643 right now on KSAT.com. A beautiful mansion, Terrell Hills, is up for sale. It comes with a hefty price tag. Currently on the market for nearly $3 million. For that price, you not only get five bedrooms and over 8,300 square feet, but rich history as well. In the early 1900s, the original owners had the home built as a wedding present for their daughter, according to listing agent Phyllis Browning. It's gorgeous. And if you've been on Facebook lately, chances are you've seen characters of your friends popping up on your news feed. That's because the social media giant has rolled out a new avatar feature in the U.S. Now users can create cartoons of themselves to use in comments and stories and messenger to go along with the like and other emojis on the platform. You can read more about the avatars and many other stories like these right now on our website at kset.com. And we were talking earlier, some of these avatars are uncanny in their accuracy, how much they look like their users and yeah. others. Not, Not so much. Close. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, what kind of avatar do you have, Marcus? No avatar. Not yet. No, nope. me neither. Just me. <laughs> right as we <laughs> take too. a look at the roadways, things still look pretty good. Now, we're still watching uh, those westbound lanes of 1604. Uh, doesn't appear to be anything here. 1604 at 35 as it makes their way past Lookout and Nacogdoches heading back over towards Green Mountain Road. And then 21 in Acoma, north and south on lanes still running smoothly with no problems here. 21 at winding ways starting to get the, an increase in traffic. So uh, just uh, be careful if you're heading out there and take an extra minute like I'm going to take an extra minute here and wish my wife a happy birthday today. Yeah, happy, happy birthday, birthday Chris. Birthday. Chris, I heard something about this. Yes. Yes, it's to her special day. Yes, all just for her. All about Chris. So today. everybody off the road. Everybody <laughs> off the road. Make way for Chris. Yes. <laughs> Awesome. That's fantastic. Happy birthday, Chris. Mike joins us now. Beautiful flowers again. I know you're jealous. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I am. laughs> Although my wife's been doing a really good job planting flowers in the back there and everything's in pots and it's just better it, so. when you don't touch the stuff, right? Nope. Yep. <laughs> I'll build something. I can't grow it though. Anyway, yeah, beautiful picture. The first hibiscus bloom of the season. 
It's a pretty, pretty color of red and a pretty color of orange and yellow and blue and everything else in that sunrise, which is just spectacular. Uh, temperatures roughly normal, exactly normal, I should say, here in town. Uh, 59 Bernie Stage, <clears throat> excuse me, 61 Helotus and 62 in Bandera, and the humidity is still tolerable this morning. 60s is always that um, kind of threshold line. You get above that, you start to feel it. So a little bit more humidity, obviously, Stinson, Pleasanton with those dew points in the mid 60s, but it's still not bad here and very pleasant out in parts of the hill country. Obviously, we've got lots of dry air upstairs in the atmosphere, so we've got those beautiful blue skies out there. And what humidity we have this morning is going to be dropping down a little bit in the afternoon, and that's going to be the situation tomorrow as well. Overnight, the dew point temperatures are going to be coming back up, but then they'll drop down in the afternoon. So it's going to be even though we're going to be well up into the 90s today and upper 90s tomorrow. If you're in the shade, it's going to be a little bit more pleasant, but that's not going to be the situation down there along the coastal plain. Unfortunately, computer model, nothing today, just uh, clear skies out there. Beautiful sunshine, pretty much same thing tomorrow may have a few clouds along the uh, coastal plain tomorrow and then Wednesday. More clouds in the morning. This computer model tries to scare up a couple of, you know, little sprinkles here and there, which that was going to be possible, I guess. And then uh, we will keep a few more clouds around throughout the day on Wednesday. And the humidity is going to start to build back in here, especially overnight Wednesday into Thursday. We keep clouds as well as a couple of showers. Even a few thunderstorms are going to be possible during the day on Thursday as well as on Friday couple of those uh, thunderstorms or two, and that's going to extend into Saturday. And I don't think it's going to be a washout, but we'll still have that chance for a few showers around here during the day on Saturday, even a couple of lingering ones on Sunday. And as it looks right now, maybe into Monday. But if you have outdoor plans over the weekend, obviously between now and then some of these things can change. Like I said, it doesn't look like it's going to be a washout, but uh, just a couple of showers around there on the good on the good news side. Though, I mean, good news. We're going to be getting some rain, but also it's not going to be as hot this weekend. 84 degrees today at noon, sunny skies. Oh, just a beautiful, beautiful day at 93 for a high temperature. So in the shade, which is where that number is taken, if you're in the direct sun, it feels hotter than that. But in the shade, it's going to be OK with that lower humidity. Same thing tomorrow. Despite the fact it's going to be up to 98, 95 on Wednesday, a few more clouds hanging around here. And then Thursday, Friday showers, a couple of thunderstorms and even a few leftover showers around here over the weekend, but down to 85 over the weekend. OK, thank you, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Uh, right now it is 648. We're at 68 degrees. And experts say that single parenting can be exhausting in the best of times. And right now the stressors may be even more difficult tomorrow on GMSA at 6. Find out some steps single parents can take to find support. If you're just now joining us, let's go outside with live cam. The sun is up over South Texas on this Monday, May 18th. You're watching GMSA. We're going to check back in with Officer Marcus Trujillo, get a time saver traffic update, and the news you need to know before you go is still to come. Good morning. Coming up on GMA, the debate over reopening the country and its restrictions. Coast to coast, crowded beaches, packed boardwalks, all this as new hot spots are popping up around the country. And the new headline overnight from the Fed chairman now warning that the economic pain from this pandemic could go well into next year. You'll see it all coming up right here on GMA. We have to wait until at least this evening to get the latest specific numbers of confirmed coronavirus cases here in Bear County. That's because officials tell us that Metro Health employees had the weekend off. It's important to note, though, this is only their second weekend off for the last 115 days since the outbreak began. I'm Max Massey. We still learned a lot from last night's press conference, though. So let's take a look at the latest numbers that we know of as of this morning. Mayor Ron Nuremberg says there are 70 patients in the hospital, an increase of four, 31 of which are in the ICU. 16 are on ventilators. He also tells us that hospital capacity is at 78% and 33% of hospital beds, so about a third, are available. And as of yesterday, 1,611 inmates have had test results returned so far. 
319 of them came back positive for the virus, but they didn't have symptoms. 74 were positive with symptoms, and it is important to mention though, no inmates have been hospitalized. Now later today, again, we expect to hear the latest specific numbers of confirmed COVID-19 cases here in Bear County, but that's not all. Later this afternoon at two o'clock, we expect to hear from Governor Greg Abbott on the latest phase of reopening here in Texas. Reporting downtown, Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. San Antonio police are searching for the man who pulled out a knife on a local convenience store clerk. Take a look at this image or these images. This man was at the Lucky 7 Food Mart on South Flora Street back in April when he reportedly assaulted the store clerk. Uh, police say he walked inside the store to purchase beer and began yelling racial slurs towards the clerk when the worker chose not to serve him. Police say he grabbed some merchandise and threw it at the clerk, walked around the counter, pulled out a knife and struck him on the top part of the head. If you have any information in this case that may lead to an arrest, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. You may be eligible for a reward of up to $5,000. And time now is 654. Mayor Ron Nirenberg reminding everyone that today has been de declared an ozone action day. These days are typically observed during the summer months when air pollution can greatly affect existing health conditions. The mayor said those with pre-existing respiratory conditions, the elderly and very young, are encouraged to stay home today. And we're going to check traffic right now. Uh, hopefully the roads are clear for uh, Marcus's wife's birthday, right? That's right. Clear the roads, get it out of the way. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, no accidents. Now, we were having some issues uh, on 1604, but uh, as you look at the westbound lanes from 35, headed past uh, Lookout and Nacogdoches, seems like everything's flowing freely once again. Didn't get any reports of any accidents. And then right now, 410 at Highway 151, traffic moving along fairly well. No problems here. 281, Nakoma, north and southbound lanes are running smoothly in 35 of Florida. That is some bright sunshine. So uh, make sure you take your sunglasses with you cut down on the glare. No problems there. I-10 and Bernie Sage Road. And then here in the downtown vicinity, 35, 37, the interchange still looking pretty good. So, so far we have dry weather and sunshine for my wife's birthday today. I just need now clear roads. Did you get her a gift and card? Yes, of course. <laughs> Just making sure. Just checking. Is she watching right now, by the way? No, she's still she's asleep. Not. Text her. She taped it. I mean, I taped it. Oh, okay, okay. Aww. No, no, I'm not waking her. Uh, <laughs> not today. <laughs> it's her birthday. Let her sleep as long as she wants. Yes, that's a good idea. Well, it's a gorgeous way to start off the day. Kind of a continuation of what we had over the weekend. And temperatures are still fairly pleasant. Right now we are at 68. That's a normal low. Uh, 65 in Randolph. And the humidity is okay. It will be dropping down a little bit now. It's going to be hot today. We'll be about 5 degrees above normal. And then... Uh, you know, temperatures are going to be getting hotter the next couple of days. As Stephanie mentioned, it is an ozone action day today. Tomorrow, even hotter, 98 degrees. The record's 101. So I think we're going to be okay as far as not hitting the record. But uh, temperatures will finally come back down to the mid-80s by the weekend. And a couple of showers, a few thunderstorms Thursday through the weekend. All right, guys, thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for being here. We'll Have a great see you day. At nine. We'll see you back here at 9.